Here's a story by Marissa Laliberte or Marissa Lalibert at readersdigest.com.au entitled 11 people who came back to life reveal what they saw on the other side. And Marissa begins, no matter what you believe about the afterlife or lack thereof, there's no denying that plenty of people have claimed to see visions or had, have, have had out of body experiences after their hearts have stopped. Skeptics might brush these off, but researchers have found that most near-death experiences tend to have common themes. Thank you, Zacchaeus Hunley, for the super chat. Zachary says it is lit, and it is. Thank you, Zach. Feelings of leaving or returning to their bodies, a sense of peace, bright lights and encounters with spirits or people. In fact, medical treatment is good enough now that there's a difference between clinical death, no breath or pulse, but could still be resuscitated, and biological death. Even cynics might get chills hearing about these otherworldly visions from people who are clinically dead or close to it. In 1994, orthopedic surgeon Tony Chikoria called his mother from a payphone during a lake house trip. They had hung up, but he still had the phone in his hand when a blue flash came out. He hadn't realized there had been a lightning storm brewing. He felt his body fly backward and then confusingly forward. Chikoria turned around to see his own body lying there on the ground. I'm dead, he thought. No grief, no ecstasy, just the fact. After watching a woman start CPR, Chikoria moved on, floating up the stairs to see his kids getting their faces painted, realizing that they would be okay. Quote, Then I was surrounded by a bluish-white light, an enormous feeling of well-being and peace, he told the New Yorker. Quote, The highest and lowest points of my life raced by me. I had the perception of accelerating, of being drawn up. There was speed and direction. Then, as I was saying to myself, this is the most glorious feeling I've ever had. Slam, I was back. Weird side note, the doctor who revived Chikoria became overwhelmed with the urge to play and write piano music. This is what a near-death experience feels like, according to science. After a four-year battle with lymphatic cancer, Anita Morjani slipped into a coma in 2006. Doctors were sure it was the end, not realizing that in her near-death state, she, st she still had consciousness. Initially, she felt like she was floating above her body with a 360-degree peripheral vision of the hospital room and beyond. She couldn't see her late father himself, but she did feel his presence. And he had a message for her. Quote, he said, I've gone as far as I can, and if I go any further, I won't be able to turn back, she said. But I felt I didn't want to turn back because it was so beautiful. It was just incredible, because for the first time, all the pain had gone, all the discomfort, all the fear. I just felt so incredible. And I felt as though I was enveloped in this feeling of love, unconditional love. About 30 hours after falling into a coma, more Johnny flickered back into consciousness. Two days later, her organs started to regain function, and her tumors started to shrink. Now she is cancer-free and is a public speaker and author of the books, What If This Is Heaven? Of books like, What If This Is Heaven? This is what professionals who have seen many people through their final moments want us to know. Annabelle Beam had been diagnosed with two chronic, life-threatening digestive disorders at the age of four. By age eight, she was ready to give up until something unexplainable happened. She was sitting on a tree branch, 10 meters in the air, when it cracked, she fell all the way down 
and into a hollow at the base of the tree, where she was trapped for six hours. She said she died and went to heaven. Quote, it was really bright, and I sat on the lap of Jesus, and he told me, whenever the firefighters get you out, there will be nothing wrong with you, end quote. And I asked him if I could stay, and he said, no, I have plans you need to fulfill on earth that you cannot fulfill in heaven. End quote. When she woke up, her illness had healed. Her mother wrote the book Miracles from Heaven, which was later turned into a film. When Ernest Hemingway was serving the American Red Cross in Italy during the First World War, he was badly injured by a mortar bomb. He apparently died for a moment, but per Hemingway's style, he doesn't make it sound too flowery. Quote, I felt my soul or something coming right out of my body, like you would pull a silk handkerchief out of a pocket by one corner. It flew around and then came back and went in again, and I wasn't dead anymore. Excuse me. The Near Death Experience Research Foundation, or NDERF, collects stories from people who have seen the other side. One four year old girl was in the hospital with a high grade fever. It caused hallucinations vomiting and fever when she felt her toes reach the foot of the bed. She opened her eyes to see herself lying on a gurney before her non-body started to rise up out of the building. I began browsing through time, she writes. I later detailed things that occurred before I could even talk. As I kept ascending, I felt at peace. There were no questions or unknowns. Time wrapped in on itself. There was no past, no present, no future. Everything happened now, and all at one time. I felt no fear or worry, but began drifting towards a beautiful light, and I wanted to touch it. Suddenly there was a pop. It felt like I was attached to a cord, and someone grabbed it and jerked me down. When actress Jane Seymour was shooting a film in 1988 by the name of Onassis, she went into anaphylactic shock when her, bronchitis, when her bronchitis antibiotics were injected into a vein instead of a muscle. Wow, you really got to have a good nurse in that case. Quote, I had the vision of seeing a white light and looking down and seeing myself in this bedroom with a nurse frantically trying to save my life and jabbing more injections in me. I'm calmly watching the whole thing. She later added how the experience had changed her. I remember looking down at this body that was mine, realizing I wasn't in it. And I totally grasped the concept that your body is really a vehicle, she said. You need to service it like a car. About 20 years ago, orthopedic surgeon Mary C. Neal, M.D., almost drowned while kayaking in Chile, and her heart stopped for more than 30 minutes. She says, soon after leaving my body, I was greeted by a group of beings who were simultaneously familiar and unfamiliar. This may sound strange, but I felt nothing but peace and happiness in their presence. When I was separated from my physical body, simultaneously I was aware of what was happening in heaven and what was unfolding on the riverbank where I had drowned. I thought about my husband and my children, my parents and siblings, and not at all about my work or other earthly worries. End quote. She went on to write the book, Seven Lessons from Heaven. When NDERF contributor Lori was 19 years old, 
She was swept into rapids on a rafting trip. She was trapped beneath the surface. And as water filled her lungs, she knew she, she, knew she was going to die. Thank you, McLeod, for the super chat. McLeod2023 says, Be good. Be good if heaven has my favorite... It would be good if heaven has my favorite Taco Bell and JC stands. Let me see if I can try that again. <laughs> it would be good if heaven has my favorite Taco Bell and JC stands his round. Thank you, McLeod. Everything went black, but then white, as if she were traveling through a tunnel. She says, looking around me, I could see a room that appeared to be formed from pure white cloud, yet was not solid. In the room were three beings made of shimmering crystal. Light showed through them like a, gra like a glass prism, forming a rainbow. One was larger than the other two, but all of them spoke to me. I was afraid of them, and they seemed to realize this. Instantly, they were transformed into what I recognized as angels. They didn't have wings. They had fibers like optic cables that were shaped like wings, and pure light shone through the fibers, forming colors in all shades. When they spoke, their messages were sent telepathically. The angels showed her a golden field with beautiful music, with a tree and a lake nearby. A kayaking rescuer had brought her to safety.